Hello. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the MPLAB device block with Simulink to program DSPIC microcontroller. We will first make the standard hello world for microcontrollers or blinking LED using the Simulink blocks. And then we will add a simple UART application. The point on this is to show that writing code for the DSP can be simplified using Simulink. Writing code for the microcontrollers involve also a configuration of the peripherals. This sometimes is complex and difficult to remember if not used frequently. The blocks in Simulink are easy to configure using a graphical user interface or GUI. So you can concentrate only on the application code. Let's review the software. We will have a MATLAB, of course, the MPLAB X and MPLAB 8, that is optional, and the associated 16-bit compilers. This is the link for the device block and the microchip web page. It's shown here, we can see that this device block for Simulink, the uh, system requirements is Windows 7, MATLAB from release R2010A to 2013B. Actually, th in this demonstration, we are using R2014A. Now down there, you can find a link for the installer of the MPLAB device block for Simulink. On the hardware, we're using DSPIC 33F J64MC802, and we have two LEDs connected to port B, 8, and 3. And the, for the UART, we will use RB6 and RB7 as our uh, receiver and transmitter points. This is a view of the board. It's very simple, just a microcontroller. We, have the, we will use the PIC kit 3 for programming. These are the two LEDs. This is the serial output, it's 3.3 volt level at this point. And the power supply is composed out of a 7805 and LM317. This input is 5 to 12 volts. So let's get started with the demonstration for that. We open MATLAB. Okay, this is the MATLAB console. Is uh, You can type Simulink here or we can go directly to this icon and start the Simulink library. This is the Simulink library browsers where we have on the left side the folders or groups where the blocks are stored. And what we do here is we will just create a new model. So file, new, model, and we have a blank window which you can imagine is as a canvas in a graphical drawing program, for example. So the work with Simulink here is a matter of drag and dropping modules or blocks in this canvas and then interconnect them based on the function we are interested on and create in the model. We can we have, as you can see here, we have a lot of different models. We have filters, we have uh, control applications. Any of those models, when embedded with the MPLAB device block, can be flashed in the microcontroller. So let's look for the group we are interested with, which is, you can see here, MPLAB device block for Simulink. Normally, you will start with uh, defining, for example, what type of chip you use. We will use configurations. Here we have the microchip master. This module will configure the particular chip we will be using here. Then we have the compiler options. We can drag and drop it here. In this case, we will use the default, but uh, some of the parameters can be changed, like optimizations, type of uh, uh, math to be used uh, depending on the application we're using. Then 
we will need a source for producing, we are blinking LED, right? So my plan is to turn the LED on and off twice a second. If we look here, we have sources and we have a counter limit. We can use this counter. We can put it here. Then we will need the output going to the LEDs. For that, we will need a digital output from the microcontroller. So we can go to the digital I.O. group and we will drag and drop here the digital output. Let's start configuring the chip we're using. So if we double click on the uh, microchip master block, we have now the, this is the default. So we look for our microcontroller. It's a 33F G64 NCAO2 and we can now look on other parameters, for example, the oscillator. We are using the internal RC. I don't have a crystal in this board. So the default is uh, the free running internal oscillator. And this is the frequency. We apply on these parameters and we already configure the microcontroller to be used. Now that we configure this, uh, this the, all the modules related to the microcontroller will have the correct information on the ports, on the uh, internal uh, blocks and modules. So if we double click in the parameters of the uh, digital output, we see that we have port A and B. This is, uh, we have uh, five pins on the A and the 16 pins on the B for this particular chip. I use in the B, so we will click and select the B. And for the output, we mentioned that we are using the pins three and eight. So we can put both, we can put three, space, eight. And that's it, the sample time minus one means that this inherit from whatever is uh, being driven in the port. So we apply and we save this. On the counter, we want it to go from zero to one and the sample type will be 0.5 seconds or 500 milliseconds in order to provide two pulses per second. The output of the counter is an unsigned integer of A16 or 32 bits. This is a case of uh, 16 bits for this uh, chip. So, uh, I, and here we are driving a signal that is either high or low in order to turn the LEDs on and off. So I need another block here in the middle in order to convert from the integer to a Boolean type of signal. For that, we can go to commonly used blocks and there is a block called data type conversion. We drag and drop it here. And now we can do the interconnections of the blocks. I can connect the output here. And we can also connect this one here. Um, if we see the conversion, we have a, a parameters, output, minimum, output, maximum, which is def uh, default. And, and that output data type inherit via back propagation, which means that whatever is the data type on the digital output, it will be adapted by the converter. So we can leave this uh, as, as is, uh, or we can force it also to Boolean, for example, here. There's no difference. So we click OK, and now we are ready to run our model, our LED blinking. Let's uh, save this model, save as. So normally, I save this in Simulink, and uh, let's call it Big test nine demo. Okay, so now we will build the model. And uh, we will use this icon here that is build the model and just wait for the building process. Okay, the process finished. This is uh, the diagnostic viewer is uh, showing uh, information on uh, what happened during the assembly and building uh, process. If there is any error, it will be shown here. And at the very end, you can see the result here. This is a feature where we have hyperlinks 
uh, to do three different things. We can uh, create a MPLAB 8 or MPLAB X project. Then we will need those applications to uh, uh, flash the chip, or we can do the flash directly from the MATLAB environment just using this function. So I already have my PIC tree connected, and I will click uh, here in the flash, and we can check on the messages coming from the MATLAB console. It's now programming, just finished and disconnect the programming, and of course, we have now the two LEDs flashing twice a second. So let's move now to the second part on the demonstration. We will now use a particular or customized C function that we can write from outside the environment and include here as part of the model. For this, if we go to the Simulink library browser, we found a group called user functions and we have a blog called C function call. So let's drag and drop this here for now. And let's see, uh, here I have some C code. This is an example uh, of the use of UART, the typical, if I am doing from a regular MPLAB project. I will have to define frequencies, a baud rate, and um, parameters that will be need for the initialization of the UART. So all these requires to understand in detail how the UR works. You need to use the, the spec sheet on the chip and uh, make sure that you have the right names and the right values for the uh, configuration. Let's move to I cut another C code here, where if you can see, I will work directly on the UART because I want to send a string of characters. So for that, I have to define uh, some functions that put in characters, uh, ending up with uh, printing a string. And this is what we are doing. Uh, we will print a string saying now ready, and a string saying now not ready. And this will be based on uh, the input that we will have at uh, my custom module. So I have an input called n. This is an input parameter. This is the function I call my UART1. This is what the function will be doing. So I don't have any output. I may have an output. If you need an output, you can put a return, and the block will have an output. In our case, we don't need an output. So this is the function. And if you check on the whole code, we don't have any configuration on the UART. And this code I will be using in the same folder we put our project. We said we have our project called pictext 9 and I will create now a new folder. I will call clip. This is the name that is used in the examples from microchip. So we are calling the cfunc2.c, save. Uh, so for now, we don't care on our code and here, what we're doing is configure this function. You see that the function is called, as we mentioned before, my UART. So I will put the full definition. And execute the function when the block is updated. This is the default. Uh, so each time the block receives information in the input, the function will be executed. And we don't have a return value from the function, so we can unclick here. We will add this function declaration in the header file, and we will apply this. A sample time again is inherited, so we click OK, and if you see, we have one input only. Now what we need to do is connect this to the output of the converter box because I will use, uh, if you check on the function, we are just, uh, if there is n, we will do something. If there is no n, we put 
now not ready. What we need here is the UR configuration. We put the module here. We double click to see the parameters. And we have a reference UR. We will use the UR1. This chip has two UARs. Uh, the pins I connected are for the UR1. And then we need to define the RX pin and the TX pin. Um, the RX pin, I'm using port B7, which is pin 16. And the TX pin is uh, port B6, which is the pin 15. We don't use any hardware for control. So we are done here. We apply this. These are the other options we may use with the default. So we click OK. Now we are finished with the model. We still have the LEDs. We now have the signal going to the C function, my UART, and we have everything configured. However, we still need one more thing to configure is to tell simulating where the source code is for this function. We just put the name of the function. So now we need to go to simulation, uh, model configuration parameters, and we go to code generation, then we go to custom code, and then include directories it will be clib, and the source file is the file we save here, which is called c underscore func 2c So we put here c underscore func 2c and we apply. So now we have the include directory and the source file defined. We click OK. And now we are ready to build the model. So again, we will click on the build model icon and wait for the building process to occur. OK, we have an error. And it's OK. The error occurred because when, if you go back to the function, we see that uh, we define as an unsigned char, not as a Boolean type. So it's two things. We can either change the function, or we can delete this, and we can now get this as the output of the counter, and build the model again. OK, the model finished now. We are ready to program again, as we did before. We can watch here on the uh, MATLAB console the messages. And we can, can go and flash inside the microcontroller. Now we finish. So we will check that the UR is actually sending the information. For that, we will use TerraTerm. And we will use the serial port. And now in the setup, the serial port, we are running at 115-200. Click OK. And here, we can see the information uh, we place there. Now, uh, every half a second, we have one message coming in and out. So coming back to the model, uh, we could be able to put an output on the function and also use the UART from the Simulim block. This concludes the demo. Thank you very much for watching.